Hi guys, welcome back to me dark room. In this video, I'm going to be making some prints of some of the photographs that I've recently been taking out on the streets. I've been a little bit into doing some street photography recently, and it brought it on because in the UK, I don't know if you know, but it's been absolutely lashing down with rain for weeks on end. And so last weekend, I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm just going to go out and face it. Take a sandwich bag, take a camera, take some photographs in the rain on the streets. And I was hoping for some real sort of gritty action, you know, where people are running around and scurrying with umbrellas and trying to cover themselves from the rain. And it was lashing down this morning I went out. And when I got to, the, uh, to our local town centre, the rain had stopped. And it hasn't really rained since. So all them plans went out the window. But... I decided to keep the same format, which was shooting Ilford FP4 and a couple of other films, but mainly pushing FP4 to 800 and seeing what I get. Now, the idea of doing that was by pushing Ilford FP4 to 800, which is initially about three stops if you rate it at 100. I wanted to get nice, punchy looking street prints with the rain. So I was hoping that I'd get nice, bloomy highlights and really dark sort of uh, shadows and just a real general punchy looking print but it wasn't to be but anyway i've still carried on pushing that film and i kind of enjoyed myself just taking me my time up the street taking a few pictures of whatever i fancied and i ended up shooting um street candy 400 atm 400 i also ended up shooting some agfa 400 as well and different cameras i went out with the leica mp and also the nikon f5 as well as the chin on ce5 camera as well and i'm not the sort of street photographer that goes running around trying to find the first person that's smoking a cigarette in the doorway and running in their face i'm not like that at all i generally just look for nice compositions nice scenes something interesting take my time walk around the streets listen to all the hustle and bustle that's going on i take pictures whatever i fancy usually if i find a composition i might wait for someone to walk past but they've got to be maybe someone interesting or you know kind of suits that scene at, at the time so there's not really much rhyme or reason about it i just enjoy walking around the streets taking photographs often if i see someone interesting i might say to them have a chat with them or whatever and then say do you mind me taking a quick photograph of you explain what i'm doing they say yeah all right nice and polite bosh take a picture you come back with a nice photograph and stumble across generally nice people sometimes people see you with a different sort of you know film camera and they recognize it and you get into conversations about photography and they'll often ask you the question my god can you still get film um, and you meet nice people and i met this nice violinist as well he was from bulgaria and he was playing a nice sweet tune up the high street and i said to him do you mind if i take a couple of pictures of you he said no problem we exchanged details and i sent uh, i sent him a couple of the scans that i made There's one moment I'm sitting on the floor and I've got this massive old lamp in front of me, this uh, lamp post in front of me. And I thought I'll plot on the floor, get a picture of that lamp post, nice 28 mil wide on a shop front, which was Poundland. And in my mind, I'm thinking one day these shops might not be there. So those photographs in my negatives might be a little bit nostalgic, maybe a little bit like when you see photographs of Woolworths, which is gone now. Um, and then I could hear this, someone shouting in the street. I thought, blimey, someone's having a go at someone, not thinking, he was having a go at me. So I turned the GoPro off and I thought I need to sort this out. So I went up to him and I politely said what I was doing. I was taking photographs. You weren't the main subject. He wasn't, I don't even think he was in the photograph. And in fact, he was, but pff, hey ho, it was only a little tiny dot in there. And it was all right. It was nice and smiles. And, uh, you know, we both shook hands and said, have, have a great day. And I think that's the way you should approach it sometimes. I think photography can get tarnished on the streets when photographers think that they've got the bang rights to go and take photographs of whatever they want and then start this argument over law or what have you. But just being a little bit uh, polite and courteous, it doesn't hurt anyone. But what disgruntled me in the first place was when he started shouting out across the street at me. Uh, 
<laughs> it just confused me. But onwards and upwards, I've got some really nice photographs to show you guys. I'll show you some of the photographs now that I've taken, and there's a couple that I want to make a print of, uh, which I think will look quite nice. <laughs> I'd also put uh, some Vaseline on a skylight filter and just left the centre circle a little bit cleaner so I've got this blurry edge sort of going on and the centre circle more in focus. And these have come out quite nice. I used to do a lot of this on the enlarger itself but recently I've started dabbling with this uh, using a skylight filter on the actual lens so I've got the negative um, as it was. So recently I've really been enjoying my street photography, just taking my time walking around the streets and taking pictures of whatever I see or, or whatever I fancy taking a photograph of. Hoping that I can also make a print that in the dark room that I can put up indoors. So I was taking a photograph of a barber shop and right next to me there was this woman standing there and I looked at her, she looked quite funky, I looked down at her shoes and I thought they look like really pair of funky shoes. There's the negative there. And I asked her, I said, can I take a photograph of your shoes? She said, yeah, of course you can after a little bit of confusion. Uh, so I've got her to put one foot in front of the other. So I'm gonna make a print of that and see how that comes out on paper. I reckon that'll be a nice print. So I'm gonna start this one off with a two and a half grade filter. And we'll see from there. I'm just gonna do a test strip on it and see what a two and a half grade filter gives me. I might have to go to maybe four or a five contrast and boost it up a bit. But uh, you can see there's the negative there. Another thing I like about street photography is if you get any dust or hairs on the negative itself when you're making prints, it's usually quite busy photographs, so you don't really see them. Not like a, a sky or something like that, but they stick out like a sore thumb. But with street photography, they usually get masked by whatever's going on around. So there's the negative there, which is projected onto the easel, ready for my paper to go down. I've done a quick focus test. It's in focus. There's her shoes. Uh, you can see her shoes are black. That's why the negative is white. Obviously, it's reversed when you're making a print. And the shoelaces look like they're going to be white. The soles look like they're going to be kind of a grey colour. Uh, and her jeans, well, they're a pair of jeans. Let's make a print and see how it looks. And I'll start off by putting this 2.5 grade Ilford filter, which is a contrast filter, underneath the lens. You'll see it change colour. There it goes. And that'll give me a mid contrast, uh, my rock to stand on. And from there, I can decide from the tests how I want to use the contrast filters if I want to make it any more contrasty or less contrasty. And this is the lens on my larger, which uh, is wide open at the moment, so I can see what I'm doing on the baseboards for focusing the stuff. I'm just going to knock that down from 2.8 down to 5.6. There you go, that's at 5.6. So that'll give me a little bit more time dodging and burning if I need to. So I'm not going to do a normal test strip. I'm just going to go for a hunch at seven seconds and I'll decide from there if I need to go more or less than seven seconds. Let's try it. Off it goes. And I've gone from her leg down to the shoe. And then it goes into the developer. And this is a new darkroom session, so all these chemicals are fresh. I'm using... Um, Photo speed developer. And it's coming out quite dark, so seven seconds is quite long. So we'll have to go back on that again. So, but what I'm going to do instead of changing the time, because I, I might need some more time to dodge and burn, I'm just going to close down the aperture by a couple of stops and do another one for seven seconds. And off we go again. So that's seven seconds again. This time, instead of 5.6, the aperture is f11. So letting less light onto the baseboard than before. We'll see how that looks. 
So I've just done a final test at 10 seconds and it come out nice. The only thing is there was a little tiny hair on her jeans, which, um, you know, I don't mind a couple of little dust or spot marks here and there on a street shot, but hairs like that is really in your face. So I managed to blow that off. Lucky enough, it wasn't trapped in the emulsion uh, and it just blew off the negative. So I'm making a print now. This is Kentmere VC Select paper. It's a uh, lustre paper, not glossy. Uh, nine and a half by 12 inch in size, 10 seconds on the clock, two and a half grade filter, F11, off it goes. I've just made the first mistake. I didn't put the um, negative in the carrier correctly. Now oh, you'll see. <laughs> That's all right. I can use this as a, to see if I need to burn any areas. Oh, this has come out quite nice. This has come out nice. I can imagine getting this one framed up against a collection of other street stuff. Just those shoes, you know, I saw them and I thought, they look interesting. Gives her a few inches of height. And there it is there. Man, they are some funky pair of shoes. She was quite a funky lady, but do you know what? I just didn't want to take a picture of her. Uh, it was just her shoes that attracted me. So I've got the uh, photographs of the shoes. Maybe I've got a foot fetish or something. And that was the original print that I did uh, where I messed up. I didn't, you can see the black line there. I didn't put the negative in the carrier correctly. So it just caught the edge of the rebate. Um, so, so, look at this, it's solarized. As I was, uh, I, I did the print and as I put it in the developer, I turned the um, the uh, the light box on to, to readjust that negative and totally forgot, hang on, I've got a bleeding bit of paper in, in the developer. That's what solarization looks like. If I'd left that in the developer longer, it would have just gone totally black. But I quickly whipped it out, threw it in a stop bath and then put it in the fix because uh, I knew it would be at that solarization look. Interesting. And this one here, I've just made a print of the violin man. Um, I've got his details, so I want to give him a print. He was a nice guy, and uh, he allowed me to take a couple of pictures of him. I wanted to darken down the outside of the print, so all this stuff don't matter. We've got a little bit of detail, you know, we're next to a window, but I didn't need it as bright as it was um, on, the, on the scan. So I did this for 20 seconds, and then for 10 of those seconds, all I did was just use a uh, dodge tool to cover his face and around these parts here so we can see that he's playing a violin and it kind of looks a little bit mysterious a little bit gloomy maybe so i made a couple more prints one was the umbrella that i saw that smashed up umbrella that must have happened before i got on the street because like i said it was it was really raining hard and when i got up on the high street it all stopped so i reckon someone's umbrella got totally battered and they just left it on the ground why don't they put them in the bin but i guess if it was in the bin i wouldn't have been able to photograph it i quite like that photograph of the broken umbrella and in this one here, I'm laying down on my belly, right in the gutter, and uh, that little tiny puddle. I was waiting for someone to walk past so I can get the reflection in the puddle. And this lady, walk, 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 I think it's a lady or person, walked past. And uh, I just managed to take that shot there, which brings me on to um, taking photographs out on the street and doing something different. I, I can get bored pretty easily doing street photography, you know. So when I went out, I thought to myself, I'm going to get low on the ground and get a lot of belly shots. And that's what I was uh, trying to go for. Obviously, as you're walking around, stuff doesn't quite suit that. But a lot of the time I was down on my belly and getting shots. And if I plotted up like this here and saw a scene or a puddle, I'd just sit there and wait for um, so someone to walk past. So if you notice on the GoPro, I was getting some funny looks from people. And I was a bit concerned as well because I thought maybe some people might think I'm lying in the gut and I've been run over or something. So uh, I made a little habit of trying to move a little tiny bit, but um, <laughs> trying to get up as quick as I could before they called the paramedics. But uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going out on the street and shooting in that style and seeing what I'd come back with. And I ended up shooting, I don't know, maybe five or six rolls. Um, all the negatives are in sleeves now and I can bring them into the darkroom whenever I want to make a print. But I shot about five or six rolls, just playing with uh, pushing film, playing with different developers, playing with different speeds on the films and uh, you know seeing what they did but most of all I was enjoying myself out on the street just taking my time walking around seeing what's about 
listening to conversations and stuff as I walk past, listening to all the hustle and bustle of the street, listening to some geezer shouting at me. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, again, back on that, you just got to be polite and courteous. Don't ruin it for everybody, for street photographers, if you're going to if you're going to start arguments and start shouting at people and giving it back to them. Um, it doesn't help in any situation. And if someone is rude, you know, just walk away. Um, don't let people bully you. But uh, in that situation, I just explained to him what I was doing. We shook hands and went, look, fair enough. Have a great day. That was it. Um, but the guy was rude to me. I didn't like the way he shouted out, oi, oi, at the top of his voice. Hey, oh, here's what it is, isn't it? And you notice in the video, I censored his face because if you don't want to be seen, fair enough. Who am I to, to throw him out in the video? But in the photograph, he had his back turned to me, so that was okay. But all these photographs I've got, you know, I can keep in my collection of negatives 20, 30, 40 years' time. Someone will find them, pan land, they'll be gone. Half of those shops will be gone and, and, and something else will be there instead. All those cars will be nostalgic. People's clothes will be nostalgic. And uh, I think it's worth doing, just walking around your local towns and recording what's there at the time. And, you know, trying to get a little bit creative, if you can, to break things up as I was on me belly. Anyway, guys, let us know in the comments if any of you guys are into street photography. What do you do? Do you get bored of it? Do you get bored of shooting street all the time? Uh, are you up in people's faces taking photographs like uh, I've seen a few videos on YouTube people doing? Or do you try and break things up and try something different um, like I was lying on me belly in the gutter let us know in the comments i hope you enjoyed the video guys and the print session thanks very much for watching the channel subscribing liking and all that stuff and i'll catch you next time